And there he is, the man, Britain. We are on another Titanic story, and our friend Britain, Britain's daughter, was it uh, Jules or was it Lily who came up with this story? Julia. His daughter Julia found a grave of a Titanic survivor, and quite a story it is. This is all Britain's. As you know, Britain and I, from time to time, do some stories together, a good buddy. So tell us the story of Charles Williams. Alrighty. Mr. Charles Eugene Williams. He was born uh, on July 28th, 1888 in London. He was a son of Welsh tailors and a world-class racquetball player. That Interesting. plays into the evening of April 14th, 1912. Now, in his teenage years, he started he started to play racquetball just as a, uh, he worked for a, uh, like a tennis, um, he worked for like a tennis club. Okay. And he was one of the janitors at the tennis club. And within one year, he just picked up the racket and became a champion. He rose through the ranks overseas by beating uh, the German racquetball champion and the Indian racquetball champion which at this time there was big rivalry between the English and the Indians. Um, he boards the Titanic in Southampton. He paid 13 pounds for his second class ticket. Um, back to the evening of April 14th, he was actually practicing in the racquetball court that they had on board of the Titanic. Anybody that knows the Titanic and has seen the map there is down at the lower levels, I believe, where the swimming pool was uh, an indoor racquetball court, one of the first of its kind at the time. And around 10.40 p.m., he finished playing, finished practicing, showered up, made his way to the smoking lounge, and from there he heard a loud crash and the whole ship shook. Now, his eyewitness testimony was when he made it to the top deck and got outside, he saw an iceberg that was about 100 feet above the promenade, 100 feet high, in which after it crashed into the ship, he also witnessed that it broke apart and drifted away. Um, there is the harrowing tale of the lifeboat. Now, if anybody has seen the film or know the Titanic stories, there was a chief officer named Harold Lowe. Now, Harold Lowe spotted Mr. Williams on the deck when he was starting to load up lifeboat 14. Harold Lowe is notorious as the officer that had to fire his pistol in the air in order to get the crowd to relax and settle down. Uh, from that point, he sees Mr. Williams on deck and he tells him, Come over here, lad. I need you to jump in and help us row. You look strong enough. And from there, they enter the water. From there, they row away. There were conflicting stories of whether or not Mr. Williams was actually in the water or not. During a testimony, Officer Lowe claims that Mr. Williams was never in the water. Um, this kind of plays a part into the story as well because shortly after the ship is down for good, within 45 minutes, lifeboat number 14 meets up with two other lifeboats and Officer Lowe orders half of the passengers on board of his lifeboat to jump into other lifeboats so he can go back and pick up survivors. Charles Williams, the main man rowing the boat to get back to the scene of the sinking they pull four people out of the water, one of which did not survive the freezing cold. Uh, one of the four people that they pulled out of the water was a gentleman named Feng Lang. I kid you not, Feng Lang. And he was one of eight Chinese passengers that were on board the Titanic. Another scene from the film where it shows the Chinese people down in third, uh, third class. And one of them was a survivor that actually stayed out in the water for 45 minutes clinging to life. Uh, from there, 
They make it to the Carpathia, they make it back to New York. From New York City, Charles goes back to England. Now to rewind a little bit, Charles had gotten married in 1910 and his first son was born in March of 1911. So big motivator for him that night to survive. He had a wife and his young child waiting for him at home. Uh, from New York, he goes right back to England where him and his wife have five more children. And in October of 1924, believe it or not, him and his family board Titanic sister ship Olympic. And they sail to New York City where they, uh, where they begin their new lives. They move to New York in 1924. Shortly from there, he moves here to Chicago to the north side where he becomes a tennis instructor and he carries on doing that until unfortunately he passes away at the age of 47 from pneumonia. Uh, October of 1935 is when he passed away. And here we have in the ground right here, Mr. Charles Williams. He was on his way back to New York to actually face off against the American racquetball champion. At the time, the Titanic, he was the champion of the world at racquetball. Well, there are so many stories of the Titanic. The deaths and survivors will probably uncover more. Not, I mean, not us, but sure. many people will. There's, there's still a lot more to be told, and everyone's fascinated with the Titanic. It was. As I said before, the chivalry of the men, on the opposite side, a few cowards, the band playing, there, there's just so many poignant stories. The hip hoc with family this. that you covered before. Yeah, the hip hoc family. So, thanks for, we got all these jets, they're moving in, guys. Rest in peace, Charles. It is O'Hare Airport. They're gonna get us, they're gonna take us away. All right, well, Thanks, Britton, for telling us the story. And may Charles Williams, hopefully he is resting in peace. Take care.